You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Swanson from WallStreetWindow.com. Welcome to the show, Mike. Oh, thanks for having me. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. The Fed had its uh, news conference and I'm wondering, have they given us any hint? Will they be upping interest rates or, or not? Uh, well, they didn't say anything. They just repeated what they said last time. However, um, on, on uh, Monday morning, uh, I saw on CNBC uh, Steve Leisman on there. He's their head economics uh, reporter. And generally, I take what they say on CNBC with a grain of salt whenever I turn on the station, but... Well, he has a special role. Um, he gets leaks from the Fed and reports them as news. So they kind of tell him what's going on and, and let him uh, play that role. And, and that's how he's uh, an important reporter. Um, and Monday morning, he said that the Federal Reserve is still, the word he used was data dependent on whether or not they're going to raise rates uh, in September, and then he made the comment that he was personally thinking that they would probably do it in December, not September. Uh, the phrase data dependent basically means they don't know, <laughs> and, and looking at the economic data uh, as a way to explain why they don't know. Uh, now, I'm going to suggest something uh, different, uh, and that is that He's right. They won't be raising rates in September. But I don't think they're going to be raising rates in December either. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, we're doing this interview after this meeting. It's the very end of July, uh, and we're heading into August. And I think the stock market is really in big trouble. Uh, it is going to be tumbling by the time we get to that September meeting and probably even continuing to fall into that December meeting. And a declining stock market will force the Federal Reserve not to raise interest rates. And there may even be talk by Steve Lees, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't. I'll predict. <laughs> I'll predict that we'll see him on CNBC at some point this year saying that the Federal Reserve is considering creating some sort of money printing program or new emergency measures to try to stop the stock market from dropping. Now, let me explain why I think the stock market is going to drop. Uh, I mean, that sounds like so far out there to be making predictions like that. But I want to say everyone to do something uh, that's listening, okay, to do something so they can see what's really going on in the financial markets. Um, you hear people make predictions that the market's going to go up or the market's going to go down or the Dow's going to go to 20000 or or 5000 or this market's going to do this and that. And, you know, when I give interviews or you see people on TV, they're always asked what the market's going to do. And re in reality, the most important thing to do is not, to listen to predictions or, or, or try to make predictions and then invest by what you think is going to happen. But to look for key turning points inside the stock market and then adjust. In particular, when you have a bull market going on for years, what you've got to do is recognize when it's over and when a new bear market is beginning. Well, the truth of the matter is the Dow topped out in May. Uh, the S&P 500 actually topped out in May. Now, the NASDAQ managed to make a new high uh, last Monday. Not this Monday, but the Monday the week before. Uh, and the transportation average for the Dow topped out, I think it was in December. So the averages, though, you know, for the person looking at the averages, they're just a little bit off the high. The NASDAQ made a new high. And on television, you know, on any given night, they'll talk about some stock that's gone up a whole lot. So that seems to be very exciting and makes 
people watching think there's just money being made left and right. The reality is quite different. Um, in, in, on the New York Stock Exchange, 60% of the stocks are dropping this year. They're in the red, and they're below their 200-day moving average. Uh, what that means is most stocks are already in bear markets. They're all they're performing worse than the market averages, but people don't really realize that because they're not telling you that on TV. You may know that if you have if you own 50 stocks and you notice that almost all of them aren't doing anything anymore. But bull markets end when only a few stocks are going up, and, and most stocks are in a bear market. And that's the situation that we're in now. And what ends up happening is right as the bear market starts, those last couple stocks that have been going up a whole lot uh, stop going up. And then everything just the averages then start to really decline. That's what happened in October 2007. Uh, back then, Google and Amazon and, and uh, Yahoo and a couple Apple, a couple of these giant tech stocks were driving the final rally that bull market. Well, the same exact thing has happened again. <laughs> you know, uh, Amazon had a, 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 a Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple. Uh, it's about a dozen or so NASDAQ 100 stocks that have driven the final rally in the stock market. And most of these stocks, have, are, when they report earnings, are dropping, uh, uh, and which is a negative sign, means that they're pretty much done. And then the market's just going to start to really drop and go into a bear market, I think, next month. Now, I want everyone to, you know, someone can listen to this and they say, oh, that I don't like hearing this kind of thing and I'm just going to ignore it and dismiss it. Uh, what I want people to do is look for themselves and then they can see what's happening. And, and if they look for themselves, they'll feel it. They'll understand it uh, a lot more than just hearing someone talk about it. So all everyone needs to do is go and look at each of the Dow 30 stocks, and they'll see what's happening. What, what they'll see is three of the stocks have really gone up a lot over the past couple months. Uh, Disney has gone up a lot. Verizon has gone up a lot. Uh, and Nike has gone up a lot. And about 20 of the stocks, are in bear markets. They're below the 200-day moving averages. They're falling. Some of the stocks are actually crashing, or they crashed last week on very high volume. They're trading like the gold stocks, uh, and, and they look terrible. And, uh, and about four of the stocks are kind of drifting sideways. You can say they're neutral. In other words, most of the Dow is just falling, and only a few of the stocks are going up. The same thing that's happening in the entire stock market. But if you just look at these Dow stocks one by one, you'll see what I'm talking about for yourself and, and understand what's happening, and then you have to figure out what you want to do about it. How come the yell and sellers, as I call them on TV, never mention this? Well, people want picks all the time. I mean, that's what the public, generally speaking, that's what the people watching CNBC want. They want to be told, you buy this stock, you'll get rich. And when people tell them something else, frankly, they just tune out. It hurts their ratings. So someone like Kramer is kind of in a trap. I mean, you know, what? all he can do is give people stock picks because if he doesn't, the ratings for the show will, will, will go away. Not only that, but these financial channels, they have advertisers that are Wall Street firms and, and brokerage houses, and they don't want, to, to, you know, they benefit from people being in the market and being told to open up accounts and trade. They can make money and get rich. And very few people are going to open up an account to short stocks or, or buy gold or do something like that. So they just don't want people, you know, to hear a, a negative message. It just doesn't make them any money. And, you know, I mean, a message like I'm saying is you sell stocks at least 10%, get a cash reserve at least 10%, take 10% of, of another portion of your money and buy gold, and you can do okay. You, you may not get rich, but 
at least you'll be protected from the drop. You'll the gold can go up because the Fed will respond to money printing or some stupid program, and the cash reserve will give you the ability to buy at a cheaper price. The average bear market results in a loss of about 36%. So buy a 36% lower price and buy low. You know, don't don't buy into a top or or something. But the problem with that message is that it's scary to a Wall Street brokerage house because the implications are that some people, some people should actually close their accounts up and, and go with cash or just do something else. Uh, because if you're 75 years old, uh, you, you don't need to lose a third of your money and hope it'll come back. You may not have time for that. It, and we, there's no guarantee it'll come back as quick as it did the other two times. Um, the bear market, there's been bear markets or sideways markets that go on for a decade. Um, and so, I mean, if you're up in years, there's no reason to take giant risks anymore in the face of a declining stock market. Therefore, uh, there's no reason to have a brokerage account uh, with Ameritrade or Morgan Stanley or any of these other companies. Uh, and that's a, you know, they, they, so that means they're going to lose, you know, they don't want to hear uh, messages that encourage people to, to, to make them not make as much money. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after this. More and more people are looking to the Internet for intelligent, riveting, and thought-provoking interviews. To advertise on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com, call 604-699-8600, 604-699-8600. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson from WallStreetWindow.com. Mike, why aren't we getting the true picture of what's happening from the financial television networks? I, I think it's like playing a poker game. Um, if you go in a casino and you sit down at a poker table, and if you think, well, the next poker hand's coming, and if I bet on that hand, I can win money. Okay, so let's say I've got a thousand dollars, and if I bet on that hand, I can win money. Okay, I'm gonna bet a thousand dollars. Well, then you look at the two cars and they stink, you know, and then you lose your money. That's not how you gamble or or, or, in, in, or make bets. And the stock market is a form of betting. Uh, whether it's gambling, it depends on how you're doing the betting. But um, the thing is, if you go to back to that poker table and you say, well, I'm going to wait 30 minutes till I get a good hand, well, now you can have a, a 75 or 90 percent chance of winning that hand or something. The, the point is that there's opportunities to make money in the financial markets, but um, they, they, there's not an opportunity to do that every single day, and it depends on what price you're paying for the stocks, where the stock market cycle is at. And in bear markets, you know, there's ways to benefit. You can short stocks. You can uh, – buy short ETFs, you can buy put options and so forth. And and if you have cash, I mean, if you have a cash reserve, you can buy in at a cheap level later. Um, I mean, it would have been nice. I didn't do this, but I wish in 2007 in October I sold everything in, in, in total cash and came back uh, a year and a half later. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity that would have been well we can't go back in time to do that but we can do something you know it may not play out exactly the same way i, I don't know I, I don't know you know the market the market felt like 50 percent back then i don't not really think if it's going to do that but we do have a similar opportunity to take profits short stocks and then buy them when they're cheap you know maybe in a year or something and and then at the same time there will be some stuff that, that tends to go up uh, opposite to the stock market. Uh, I think gold and the mining stocks will, will do that, but they haven't started to do it yet. But something always does it, and there's opportunity to be made there. So it's not like that's, that's really the, the real problem, I think, is most people just think there's only one way to make money, and that's, you know, buy these popular stocks on television or mutual funds 
and that's it. And they don't know of other ways to make money. Um, and it's, you know, it takes work to do more than just to buy a bunch of funds and just pray it goes up forever. Uh, it takes work. And, uh, and, and, you know, <laughs> people that don't have a lot of people, most people don't have the time to do it or the, uh, or, or the uh, desire to uh, to do it, and in the end, what ends up happening as a result is they repeat the same cycle all over again of buying, and the market goes up, and then it, and then uh, they hold, and it goes down, they lose everything, and then it goes up again, and they just sit there and they never sell, and it goes down again, they lose it all, and, and in the end, you know, they kind of are spinning their wheels and going through a difficult uh, emotional <laughs> process there. I've heard uh, a lot of institutions have sold off their stock, and they're hoping that what they call dumb money will come in now and make these stocks look valuable when really they're not. Well, yeah, that's at this point, you know, what happens in a, in a bear market is as the market declines and we're not quite in that situation where the bear market I think we're at a tipping point but the real bear market cycle comes when stuff really falls week after week after week I mean actually a lot of stocks are in that situation now most stocks are but the averages aren't but what ends up happening is when the averages go into a bear market they'll fall for months on end but during the decline you'll have rallies that are very short term, 200, 300 points on the Dow in a day, sometimes back to back days in a row, just like we've seen this week, actually. <laughs> and what those rallies do is make people think that that's how you make money, is buying the stocks that are up on these rallies. And, and if they think, if I could have just bought, you know, before the Dow went up 400 points, I can get rich. So, or they think, well, it's up 400 points, so it's going to go up more. So they get really mesmerized by these rallies. But what ends up happening, and I think is what is going to happen to this one, is the rally ends. Actually, I think it doesn't have this current bounce. I think is about is really pretty much done. And then you get another leg down. So in July, the stock market last week fell just about every single day. It fell about five days in a row, and it's now bounced two days, uh, three days, and, um, you know, it'll probably fall five days in a row afterwards. The point is that the bounces make people, that's what people pay attention to, uh, because they're big when they happen. They're called wonder rallies, and it keeps people, you know, hopeful or or trying to, to, to buy bottoms and do this and that, while month after month, the stuff just continues lower. I mean, that's the experience, you know, we, we've seen in gold and in the gold stocks. Uh, they topped out in 2011, and gold stocks crashed 10% last week. Uh, and uh, that's a long, drawn-out bear market, and the rallies there have fooled people, myself included at times into thinking that it's going to bottom out. And it's the rallies that keep the people in. Now, you know, we're not, like I said, we're not at that point where the market's really in a sharp downtrend, but I think that the disintegration of the internals of the stock market and, and the fact that most stocks are now going down and it's just like on the Dow, three stocks left that are going up, that suggests to me that we are at the tipping point, and, uh, and and now's the time to act on that. Mike, thanks a lot for chatting with us. Thank you. It's always great to talk with you. My guest has been Mike Swanson from WallStreetWindow.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Check out our popular YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time.
Available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. Howstreet.com Radio is a production of Howstreet Media Incorporated.